Mom told me to tell you that they're here. Okay. Well, it has been so long, and we are so happy to have you guys back, right? We'll be right back because I want to bring you to see Janice. Come on. Thanks again for hosting this, Frank. It's very generous of you. Don't mention it. Uh, how are you guys settling in? We're getting there. Tristan here has been quite a trooper. Hey, I wanted to, uh... Hi, I'm Evan. Hi. My mom said you didn't get to take any toys back with you. We didn't have room. Do you like airplanes? Yeah. This one's pretty neat. You can have it if you want it. Thanks. Wanna go play? Go on. Wow. You must be so proud of him. Yeah. Would you excuse me, please? toys back with you. We didn't have room. Do you like airplanes? Yeah. This one's pretty neat. You can have it if you want it. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It was World War II, 1945, and the victory had been won. Most of Europe lay in, in shambles and rubbish. Desolate buildings bombed out cities, and American soldiers were occupying the vast majority of the area that was west of Berlin. And one of the difficult challenges our soldiers had were the number of children who had been orphaned because of the war. And even orphanages had been destroyed and children were, were scrounging in the streets to survive. And of course, coming from the abundance and the plenty of our nation, that was hard for our soldiers to, to, to deal with. And the story is told of a, of a young soldier who's driving his Jeep through part of the bombed out part of London on his way back to his barracks early one morning. It was frosty and cold. And as he went down a street, he saw a, a bakery shop because not everything was destroyed. And there was a, a little boy standing outside looking in. Ragged clothes, dirty, cold, but he had his face pressed up against that glass that was steamy and wet on the inside with the ovens working, watching the baker. The soldier pulled his Jeep over and quietly walked up behind the boy and watched because through the window, the baker was kneading the dough and tending the ovens. And when the baker turned and pulled a rack of donuts out of the oven and began to slowly place them into the glass display case, the little boy just groaned. The soldier said, son, would you like some of those? And it startled the boy because he didn't know he was behind him. He said, man, would I? And the soldier opened the glass door and walked in, told the bakery he wanted a dozen donuts. They were put into a sack. The soldier wrapped the top of the sack down, walked out, and handed them to the boy. He said, here you go, son, and walked off. Before long, the little boy was pulling on the back of his jacket, and the soldier turned around, and he said, mister, are you God? What I want you to understand is we are never more like God than when we give to bless other people. What is the passage you all know? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. God gave Jesus into the world and everything that we just celebrated last Sunday, everything that Easter means is that all the hopes and dreams that filled the heart of God 
have been fulfilled. Because with Jesus' resurrection, everything God desired to give to us, He's accomplished. Because in Jesus, we have forgiveness of all of our sins. In Jesus, we have a restored relationship with the Father, and because the tomb is empty, we have life that will never end. So we begin this new series that is titled Living Generously because our desire is to understand the heart of God and what He wants for us so we can live life to the fullest. But I know as soon as I say the title, Living Generously, we get stuck on the generously part, don't we? You know, the part where we think, oh, they're going to be talking about money, or it's stewardship, or they're going to be asking to give money to the church. Let me tell you something. The focus of this series is about living, about living life to the fullest as God's children. And a generous heart is not just about money. It's about everything that we are as God's children and everything we've experienced from the heart of our God. For example, when the teacher of the law questioned Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus instantly, immediately responded, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You should love your neighbor as yourself. The greatest commandment, according to Jesus himself, and it doesn't say a word about money. It's about loving God, experiencing the love he has for us and loving him in return and letting that love overflow out of us to touch and bless the lives of others. So in the movie clip, and we're going to be using the same story all the way through, you have Frank, the dad, who you could kind of make out to be the bad guy, but he's really not. He's a shrewd businessman. He's a wealthy man. And he is in some ways a generous man because you heard him say, we send a support check every month. They support their church. They support different charities. But his heart isn't right. He is generous only out of his abundance. And what you see in that first video clip is that God gives to Frank the opportunity to understand sacrificial giving. To give in such a way that you bless others in a significant way. And it's not just about money because Evan didn't have any money, his son. But what he did have, what was his favorite toy, He was ready and willing to give to someone to bless them. So it's not just about money. It's about everything that we are. It's about everything that we have. And it's about how we understand that all that we have received from God, He gives to us, not just to bless us, but to bless others. When Jesus was standing next to the treasury in the temple, and Sarah's analogy was, image for the kids was wonderful. They would make a big, you know, pomp and circumstance about their giving. They wore their fine clothes. They, they would walk back to the place where they gave the offering, and they'd make a big show, and everybody saw how much they gave. But then the little old lady comes in. I have a widow's mite, an actual antique widow's mite that's dated from the time of Jesus in my office. If you want to see it, I'll I'll be glad to show it to you. It is about the size of your small fingernail. It's little bitty, weighs hardly anything. And while all the rich people are making a big show, she simply puts her two little copper coins into the treasury. By our standard today, it would not even equal a value of a penny. And yet... Jesus actually takes the time to call his disciples together and points this woman out and says she has given more than everyone else. And it wasn't about what she gave. It was about her heart. She loved her God. And her heart was so filled with love for God and because she understood God's love for her and absolute trust in God, She, he says, these others gave out of their abundance, but she gave all she had to live on. 
And that meant she had the absolute trust and confidence that God loved her enough to take care of her no matter what the circumstances were in her life. She loved God first because she knew God loved her. In the video clip, Frank is standing in the bedroom trying to find something that is left over, something that is insignificant to him to give, something that cost him nothing and meant nothing. He wants to give, but it's not about giving sacrificially. It's not about giving of of what he truly can give. It's just about meeting the standard, meeting what's expected. I want you to hear something real quick. The definition of generosity, showing a readiness to give more of something than is strictly or necessarily expected. The children of Israel in the Old Testament were called to make offerings to God. And Ray, the the black gentleman in the video, draws the sheep. And the analogy is, is really good. What we give to God reflects our heart and our love for God. God said, give me the best you have to give. And he drew the picture of the nice, white, plump sheep. But some people don't want to give God the best. They want to give God the leftovers. The, you know, the, the, what he called the stinky sheep, the spotted, the sick, the lame. And, and it's not that God needs sheep. God is looking for our hearts. And what is in our hearts is reflected in our actions. And God wants our hearts to be so filled with love for him that our actions reflect that in everything we do. For Ray the gardener, it wasn't about money, it was about service. It was about giving of his time and his talents to serve in a way that reflected his love for God as he interacted with others. For Evan, it wasn't about money, it was about a toy, about sacrificing something that was precious to him to bless someone else. For Frank, it was about the money and his unwillingness to go above and beyond simply what was expected. God doesn't want or need your money. That's not what he's after. He is after your heart because he wants your heart to be filled with his love. So often when we are ready to make a decision, we, we, we make a decision based on how is, this be- how is this best going to affect me? When God would have us turn that question around, how is what I'm about to do going to bless others? If we focus on ourselves, we become selfish with our time, with our abilities, with our talents, and yes, with our financial resources. But if we focus on others and the focus is off of us, it by its very nature moves us to love them even more than we love ourselves. That's why God is so concerned about your heart. In fact, it was King David who wrote in Proverbs, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. Listen to that again. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. Your heart is going to guide every action of your life. Keep your heart in such a way that your life reflects what is truly the priority. Because what is in your heart is going to be reflected in your life. And why is God so concerned about your heart? Because his heart is filled with you. God is concerned about your heart because you are the focus of his heart. Do you understand that? And we are one week away, from, you know, past Easter. Do you understand what God's heart is filled with? He loves you. That is the focus of his heart. He didn't have to do anything that he did. He chose to, to give sacrificially, to sacrifice his son because his heart was focused on you. And Jesus himself, 
I think his very life is the fulfillment of that passage. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. I think that passage identifies the life of Jesus. Because what kept Jesus on the cross? Why would he do what he did? It was first, love my God. He loved his Father. He yearned in his heart for his father to no longer grieve the loss of his children. He loved his father to the point that he was willing to give everything, even his life into death, so that his father could have his children back that were lost to sin. So it was Jesus' love for the father that moved him to go to the cross. And it wasn't the nails that kept him there or the power of the Roman government or the deceptions of the Jewish leadership. It was love that held him on the cross because it was love for you that moved him to shed his blood and win for you forgiveness. It was love that filled the heart of Jesus. Love for the Father and love for you that he became Savior and died and rose to make everything possible for us. So, God wants your heart. He wants your heart because He wants you to understand what's in His heart. The absolute, unconditional, unceasing love He has for you that He wants to give to you and let it fill you and flow through you and change the lives of everybody that knows you. It's about living about living life to the fullest with a heart that simply reflects the heart of God. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. And we do have a closing snippet to watch this morning. You ever stop to think about why God asks his people to give him the healthy spotless sheep? instead of the six stinky ones? They were just going to be sacrificed anyway, right? Is God offended by spots? Do healthy sheep make better lamb chops? I think you know the answer to that. It's not about the sheep. It's about you, and it's about your love for God. Do you love him enough to give him your first and your finest, or do you only love him enough to give him the leftovers? Now, Frank was about to give away something that meant nothing to him when he saw his son give up something that meant a lot. You know, there's a passage in the Bible, 2 Samuel 24, 24, where King David says, I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God an offering that costs me nothing. You see, it's not really a sacrifice unless it's something we value. Let me put it this way. God gives us gifts. We give them to others. We're not giving. We're re-gifting. Now, if someone re-gifts to you something they didn't want in the first place, you may tell them thank you, but inside, you'd question how much you really matter to them. But if someone passes on to you a gift that they had cherished, a gift they hate to lose, but want you to have even more, that says something different. The gift reveals the heart. Reveals it to whom? Well, God already knows it all, right? He doesn't need some kind of demonstration. God wants you to see your heart and what you really love, honestly. When we can only give our stinky sheep, we know our love is incomplete. God loves us too much to let us waste our lives loving lesser things. When we give our first and finest to God and to his children, then we are learning to love God as the highest, holiest thing in our life. So what about you? What sheep do you find yourself sacrificing? Do you give God the best of your time, talents, and treasures? Or do you just give him what's left over after you've taken care of everything else? The gift reveals the giver. Open up the gift, look inside. What you'll see is your heart. And whether you give your good sheep or your stinky sheep will tell you a lot about what and who you love the most.